Hi, I am Antonio Sella, and in this video we are going to discuss what is the meaning of fitting a model for classification. I mean fitting a model when the target data to fit are yes, no samples. We'll just discuss the problem statement and in fact only the deterministic way of stating these problems. In the second video we'll discuss the probabilistic way of thinking on this. Let us first understand what kind of problems are we referring to. I mean, for instance, I would like to fit a model, whatever it means, to reflect the fact that increasing the time I devote to studying a particular course will increase my chances of passing it. Or that presence of Nigeria inheritance million dollars in an email should somehow increase the possibility of that being a spam mail. Oh well, we just wish to learn how to classify pictures to detect whether a dog is present or not in a sample picture. So in all these cases we have classification problems. Let us formalize a little bit that. These kind of problems, I will have samples of two variables, capital X and Y, let's say, grouped in pairs. Each sample will be denoted in lowercase. Data on the variable X will be information input to my classification system and Y will be the desired output of my system. Well, maybe not exactly, but at least will be the target sample, which will be yes, no. Input X can be either categorical, this customer is Spanish or French or Portuguese, or it can be numerical, this customer is 39 years old, but in classification what we aim is for a categorical target. In fact, in abstract form, it will be a binary target. So for instance, X may be the number of hours devoted to studying my statistics in control course, and Y will be the pass-fail score in the final examination. And as I will have samples in which X, Y are grouped together in pairs, then this kind of problem will be called supervised classification, supervised learning or whatever. The first comment on this is that, okay, categorical labels, dog, not dog, are not numbers. So even if we symbolize 0, 1 in most mathematical derivations, they are not numbers, they are just a piece of information that can take two values, but we cannot make operations with them, I mean. So if I classify either dog or cat, I cannot interpolate, multiply, sum or whatever with those stuffs, okay? And a second observation is that, well, if I have, let's say, a multi-class classification problem, so I must decide whether I have a dog, a cat or a flower in a set of samples, then I can always decompose it in three independent, well, maybe they are dependent, more on that later, you know, for the moment in three separate, let's say, binary classification problems. In the sense that, well, I may have one bit of information, that it will be one when a given sample is a dog, and it will be zero when a given sample is not a dog. Maybe it's something else I have one there. So one bit for dog, not dog. Another bit for cat, not cat. And the third bit for flower, not flower. Can, at least in an abstract sense, decompose my problem so my outputs are always categorical, binary, zero, one stuff. Of course, if I then solve the problem in a separate way, then I lose somehow the cross talk between the classifiers because, you know, maybe the dog classifier could tell 
the flower classifier that he thinks a given picture is 99% sure a dog. So with that information, the flower classifier might do a better job. But okay, that's part of the solution of the problem. In the abstract problem statement, we have a set of binary output variables. So we may write our theoretical stuff or our code on these binary target outputs of my model. But well, exploiting the interdependence among them, well, that's another issue. So as I said, these problems could be deciding whether an email is spam or not, given some words in it, deciding whether student will pass or not, given the time he devoted to it, or, you know, deciding if a picture is a dog or not, given the pixel color on it. But well, some of these problems may have a random statistical component, let's say, in the exam results, John may pass studying 78 hours, but Juliet may fail studying 79 hours. So there's kind of uncertainty because there are more things to the examination than study time. But on the other case, is it a dog or not? In principle, it's sort of a deterministic problem. If I show a picture to a neural network, well, you know, either it has a dog or it has not a dog. Well, you know, things may be more tricky. I mean, maybe maybe it has a picture of a dog in a t-shirt or it may have the tail of a dog. So kind of a categorical yes, no decision, 100% of the cases may have some nuances. But OK, we are just defining this kind of problems in an abstract level. And in abstract level, well, we can think on these problems in a statistical way or in a deterministic way. And, you know, dog is deterministic, study time is random. Let us further discuss the meaning of these problems in a deterministic way. For instance, in a deterministic setting, we would like perhaps a perfect classification. Learning given each sample X, learning all labels, of course, one way of doing it will be road learning. Just memorizing that picture 122 was a picture of a dog. So when sh somebody shows me that picture, I must answer dog because they told me that the solution to that problem was dog. OK, you may guess that that is usually useless in machine learning or artificial intelligence, you know. Road learning is useless if I change a single pixel of my dog picture. So we don't want that. So we want some kind of classification rule, hopefully simple enough. So that for instance, I have some function of some adjustable parameters so that when that function is negative, then these samples correspond to a red stuff. So the output that I want to predict is red, blue, and I have two numerical input parameters, x1, x2. Then in this case, I achieved perfect classification. And well, in some cases of perfect classification being possible, perhaps I would like to say that this cyan threshold is kind of a nicer one than, for instance, an alternate way of separating blue crosses from red circles, which I could have depicted as, for instance, this. They both perfectly do the job, but, okay, somehow the cyan threshold seems smarter than the green one. In general, the green stuff will be nonsense, and the cyan boundary may be good, so if perfect classification is possible and not unique, then we must tell in a formal way, of course, which is the most desirable shape for the classification boundary. And then we have some kind of support vector machine stuff to do that, for instance, it's one of the solutions. But OK, in some cases, if this function is not complex enough, I mean, maybe this thing 
is something theta 1 x1 plus theta 2 x2 plus, plus theta 3 x1 x2 squared plus uh, cosinus of x1 squared minus x2 squared theta 4 plus, you know, we may have a very complex function to fit this strange shape, but in some cases, for instance, we just have kind of linear separation boundaries in the sense that, okay, if we draw a line, what happens? Well, in that case, as this data set is not linearly separable, then perfect classification is not possible. So what can we do? Well, somehow we could try to minimize the number of mismatches. So these ones are misclassified here. These ones are misclassified. And then if I move up a little, then wow, I get less red errors, but more blue errors, then, well, you know, we could do something like that. But in general, the abstract way of discussing that is that my function outputs a classification and then I may state a loss function in which I compare the actual label with the output of my model and then I minimize that loss function. For instance, my f in the linear classification setup could be sine of this linear expression with three adjustable parameters. And then, of course, I have an error. Let's say one is blue, zero is red. And then, of course, if I have no error, my target and my modal output are identical, then my loss function must score zero error. But then I must decide the loss function when my model classifies as zero, but it's one, or when my model classifies at one and it's zero. This means, for instance, that I have, let's say, a type one error here. Reds get classified as blue and the type two error here in which blue get classified at reds. Of course, you know, if these are, you know, color balls, then I don't think one type of error matters more than the other. But if I am diagnosing lung cancer, then one thing called false positive is telling somebody that it has a cancer when he has no cancer at all. And false negatives is telling somebody that he is perfectly fine, but he has diabetes or cancer or whatever. Then depending on my classification rule or boundary, I may make some errors of one kind or errors of the others. And then for instance, well, in this case, this is asymmetric. So that let's say saying red when it is blue will cost me $7 in cost function, but saying blue when it is red will cost me two. Well, these are of course problem depending and uh, red and blue is nothing compared to deciding or not whether to give uh, chemotherapy or not, depending on the results of a blood test. So defining priorities for these two kinds of errors is key in obtaining useful solutions to problems in which perfect classification is not possible. But, okay, this is kind of the deterministic interpretation in which, let's conclude, we have some input and some categorical outputs which, even if they are not binary, multi-class, let's say, they can be decomposed in several bits of information. So we need to fit each of the bits. And even if some problems are random, we'll discuss them in a SQL video. Some of the problems are deterministic, dog, not dog, red, blue. And then, ideally, I wish perfect classification, but in some cases, perfect classification is not possible if the flexibility of my model is not good enough. So then I aim for an imperfect classification, putting a loss function that is non-zero when 
my model is wrong, maybe it's non-symmetric, and then I adjust my parameters to minimize the sum of this loss function across all samples. We also discuss the fact that sometimes we wish somehow nice and simple diagnostic rules because, you know, for instance, if I had this data set in which, oh, I have here that, then maybe I would be happier with this decision boundary that leaves one out instead of this complicated boundary that achieves perfect classification. Maybe, you know, having a simple thing that works 99% of the time is better in practical engineering than having a very complex thing that works in 100% of the cases. So the smoothness and the degree of complexity of the decision rule can be something that we must also take into account in this class of problems. So we finish here and the probabilistic interpretation, this study probability of passing an exam as a function of study time will be discussed in next video. We conclude here. Thanks for watching.